at Vice's radio network. Franco is pretty smart, but Franco is a child. And when it comes to the day of the contest, I'm his father. He comes to me for advices. So it's not that hard for me to give him the wrong advices. Hey, what is up, guys? Welcome back to Advices Radio. You are listening to episode number 108. Today we have with us IFBB Pro, Brandon Curry. I'm your host, Scott McNally, and this program is brought to you by truenutrition.com. If you listen to the ad that's a little bit later in the show, I talk today about a new contest that we are running to promote Think Big Bodybuilding Media. That is our new YouTube site where all of the video versions of our podcast will be. And I'm teaming up with True Nutrition to uh, to run this uh, contest. And what we're going to do is give away some one pound bags of their flavored oatmeal blends. So stay tuned for details on that. And you can always shop with True Nutrition using our codes that will get you a discount and it will let them know that you support our programming. Our codes are ADVICES as well as ADVICES OATS, which will get you a 25% off of their oatmeal blends. All right, guys, today we have with us Brandon Curry. He's back. We spoke to him a couple times now, right before the Arnold Classic, and then again right after his Arnold Classic win. And it's been an interesting season. By all counts, Brandon has continued to improve since that time so that's one of the things that i I really wanted to talk to him about was was what have you been doing different and and how have you developed this momentum so i feel like after speaking with him i have a better understanding of of how he got to be where he is now as he closes in for for what is the biggest show in the contest season and and what could possibly be the most important contest of Brandon's life. Plus, Brandon shares some interesting insights regarding his competition, as well as the competitors that won't be there. It's some cool stuff. We get to hear uh, some interesting stuff about Bader Budai, things things that I didn't know about him in, in the businesses that he's developed through his life. And, and of course, Brandon talks about his family. So it's it's really cool stuff. We really get to hear you know who Brandon Curry is, and we get a better look inside of the prep of one of the most looked at bodybuilders in our modern current day. Guys, these are exciting times. If you're going to be out at the Olympia, then look for me. I'm going to be doing a video project out there. I'll be with Victoria Felcar. And if you see me, let me know. Let me know. Say hi, because I want you to be part of this video project, too. So so definitely, guys, I'm looking forward to seeing all of you out there at the Olympia. And I'm definitely looking forward to seeing Brandon on stage. All right, guys, let's get to Brandon Curry. All right, guys, welcome to the new channel, our new YouTube channel, Think Big Bodybuilding Media, and of course, Advices Radio Network. These things are going to be working hand in hand for both of your your podcast audio and your podcast video. And uh, we started right at the top here. We've got uh, IFBB Pro, Brandon Curry. You're our very first interview for the network, man. Thank you so much for being here with us. Hey, man, I'm honored, man. It's it's a pleasure. Man, I'm... uh, I'm so excited for you. You know, we we talked first, uh, you know, this is before the Arnold Classic, and VJ and I were predicting on Bodybuilding Nerds that, you know, you were going to do pretty well. And, of course, you walked through that thing, man. You looked you looked your all-time best. You know, we've, we've covered that. We talked about, uh, you know, how that went down, everything that you had done. If you guys haven't listened yet, you can go back on the audio shows at Vices Radio. We had uh, talked to Brandon right before the Arnold, right after the Arnold. We talked about all the changes that you've gone through, uh, you know, in your mindset and, and how you've gotten to where you are today. Now, that was a few months ago, and, and I feel right. like a lot's changed, man. I've been following your Instagram and I don't know what gear you switched into, but <laughs> something's different, man. And you're the biggest I've ever freaking seen you before. So, I mean, first of all, that's one thing I really want to talk about today is, is what you've done with your training and your nutrition, what Abdul has been doing with you. Uh, so, so start us out, man. Where are you at right now? You're out in Kuwait, right? 
Yeah, yeah, right, right on Uncle Wade. You know, every day training at the gym. Today, of course, is my is my off day, so um, I'm I'm just chilling and hanging out. Okay. But uh, man, this this preparation has been just different. Uh, I just think we just kind of my body just kind of went off the momentum of coming out of the Arnold. Mm, yeah. And um, we kind of, you know, I didn't really push anything because I was traveling a lot. But the goal and objective was not to get fat. Okay. Uh, but during that time, I like to kind of do the opposite of what I would do here. So I, I lowered my, my volume a little bit, increased my intensity in my training. Okay. And, and, and since I am my frequency, so it's kind of like a deconditioning effect, I guess you would say, mm. as I'm letting my body weight go up as well just from coming out of the show yeah so you know that that ex- experience was very positive for my body uh my weight you know it was going up i was staying pretty lean i was feeling pretty good i was getting strong and, and that's pretty much what i try to do before i get back to home base here for training i try to just work on getting stronger uh you know just getting more solid working on my working on my weaknesses as much as possible okay. and trying to figure out how to how to better connect with uh, the muscles that need to need to be worked you know okay and um so, so that, when i've come back i'm practice okay so that all took place back in the u.s this was all just post yes, arnold yes. you were home with the yep. family and mm-hmm. i you know and and i know you were also you know you you were making up for lost time too while you're in kuwait you don't have right. the you don't have the opportunity to spend as much time with the kids so i've seen all sorts of videos and pictures of <laughs> you, you having time with the family so you you had that mental break too the mental break and when I and I and I, I wasn't in the gym too much. Okay. Uh, but so when I was in the gym, my intensity was there, and my my motivation was there, my drive was there. Yeah. Uh, but everything else that was surrounding it, you know, I was trying to enjoy life as much as possible. Of course, uh, you know, traveling with the family, doing things with the family has been it was been been great, and uh, so it it, it kind of just refreshes you, and then you know, gives you a break from that zone. Yeah. But, you know, me being a bodybuilder, the most improved, I, I'm still I'm still in work mode some somewhat, you know, of course, when I can be when of I can. Course. Be. Yeah, because, you know, I'm I, you know, I, the goal was always on my mind. Yeah. So I knew that the plan was to come and win the Arnold for the 2019 season. And that would solidify my chance to be one of the front runners in the Olympia. Right. That was the goal. And I and that's what we set out to do. So I knew that. My campaign would not be over just from winning the Arnold. Mm. Uh, I, w- I would just need—I would need to cap- capitalize on on the Arnold, and 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 bring in expectations uh, into the Olympia. You know, I had expectations, but make those expect- expectations, uh, re- you know, real in the, in the mind of a lot of the print, the fans and the critics. Yeah. You know, you know, really give them the opportunity to see that. You know, <laughs> you know, I'm I'm working towards the title. So by the time I got here, yeah, oh, uh, it was it was gravy. It was really gravy, really strong, really really going hard. Body changing really really fast. Mm. Now my wife my wife had a um, had an idea that seemed to work out just right. Okay, she wanted me to come out two weeks early, just to kind of get my mind in the groove. And yeah. then come back home for two weeks because I had a guest posing okay. in the U.S. Yeah. And my daughter had a, a national soccer tournament in San Diego. So my guest pose was in, in the Seattle area. Yeah. And, of course, we were in San Diego. So I basically went there to watch her play Okay. in the, in the national uh, championships. And then I left there to, over the weekend to guest pose Okay. Yeah. Uh, in Seattle. So then I met them back home later. So it uh, that gave me two weeks to kind of spend with the family we went to see world we did some things out there in san diego yeah yeah and, that's cool met up with some met up with some family as of course as well and then i was able to you know i'm i'm, I'm in that zone where i had to post for tangy johnson and her show oh yeah so yeah. i'm already having to you know start this uh campaign you know as far as the fans of the community right Re- kind of reconnecting connecting to right. to the people that you're going to be standing in front of and yeah, exactly sure sure it makes it more of a reality right. so, that, about, that, yeah. so that two weeks in kuwait uh i think was just just my wife prescribed just right because it gets me in that okay it's it's time to turn it on now you know yeah yeah and and so i came back and i'm still you know in that zone it's not letting me leave that zone because I know what I got to go back to. Right. And then I have an appearance. So, so by the time I got back to Kuwait, it's just 
back back to it again you know yeah and i bet by so, the time you got back that at that second time you were probably ready you were like plugged in you know you were feeling it you got to talk to people you got to kind of take the temperature of the crowds and you know I also also mm-hmm. also my wife designed that i got to stay i used to live outside uh, in southern california i okay. used to drive up to san diego to train at uh world's gym at the time it's called okay. the gym now Okay, and that's where P.J. Coney, Derek Farnsworth, I think oh, Sergio yeah, yeah. Junior trains there right now. It's it's a wonderful gym, bro. It's yeah. a wonderful gym. It's called the gym now, and, and the owners are real real nice. I went in there, and she got a, a place that's close to there, so I could I was less than ten minutes away from that gym, nice. So I could train every day, and I'm and I'm you know I'm used to training that environment, and that's an area where I really went to push my intensity when I was younger. Okay, Derek and Pete and them those guys. So being in there. In the open air element as well. Yeah, I got some good training while I was there. And it sounds really like training. it sounds like reconnecting too with with your past. Like I know that when I kind of get unplugged, if I think about like what I love about the sport, I think about like when I really was working my hardest at times, and when I was younger, I go back to a place like that gym, and I start feeling those feelings again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can see yeah, what you're I mean, saying. And then, and then and then being mistaken, like people not noticing you at first. Mm, okay, I, I, I actually intentionally paid to get in really okay and then he, then they, i walked away from the desk and, and something clicked and he was like but i didn't take my money i didn't give him my money you know i didn't take my money back yeah yeah he recognized me yeah he was like what in the world <laughs> you know but he, <laughs> so he recognized me but not at first you know yeah so uh yeah i, I didn't you know i don't mind paying to get in gyms you know you got to support the community so it's not a big deal how, how often uh, does that happen by the way you know because in, in our world you know, you go to the Arnold Classic, you, you're known by everybody. Now, mm-hmm. if, you know, if, if you take a guy like Shaquille O'Neal, everybody knows him. He's a sports figure, but he's also known by, like, the general public. How is that for you as a bodybuilder? I mean, I imagine your size. Like, if you're just walking around San Diego with your family, you've got to get some heads turning. But how often are people like, oh, that's Brandon Curry? It happens very, very often. I, I bet. In, in the weirdest places, like, like I said, we were at SeaWorld, and, you know, as soon as I get in the gate, uh, you know, people want to come take pictures that you know who I was. So uh, I was like, well, I wasn't expecting it, you know, uh, being all the way out here. But I guess, you know, because I'm not in the community. I lo- I'm in my local community a lot. I understand that. But I'm not in the community at, at large. Right. A lot of times with my family, you know. So, right, right. Uh, so, yeah, it was, it's, it's interesting. It's uh, it's exciting uh, when that happens. But a lot of people have been following me for a long time. Kind yeah. of seeing this journey, you know. Absolutely. So that it's 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 been interesting, but oh man, I had had a blast at that gym. I'll, I'll be honest, it was a great idea. Like I said, I give credit to my wife on that. That's cool. But but you know, so going back, it was great, man. And and I'll tell you something about this prep. It's been different from my Arnold prep. Hmm. My Arnold prep was was it was really really easy. And I'm not saying this prep is any hard, but this prep has been my body has uh, fluctuated less. Really? Okay. <laughs> Meaning that I've been, you know, I got my weight up to a certain degree, and it's been hard to get the weight to come down. Really? Okay. And but it's not like I'm not getting in better shape. Mm. So, in my in my conscious mind, I'm like I'm looking at the scale, thinking oh, I gotta get this weight down. But every time I look at a video, or look at a picture, I'm like, well, I'm looking better. So yeah. Uh, you know, so I, I, luckily I had both <laughs> uh, both references because in my mind I'm kicking myself in the butt. Yeah. And, and I'm doing more cardio this prep. Than I, than I probably ever have in my whole career. Oh, really? Like, really? Like two hours, two hours a day. Wow. Still, wow. Split up, I take this, it, or how do you do that? Yeah, split up, split up. Morning okay. and then uh, in the evening. Okay. So what what do you do for your cardio? Uh, well, first we started out on the step meal. Okay. And then I was doing uh, the the bike in the evening. Okay. Okay. And then and then uh, I just I like the step meal, but sometimes I'm not motivated. To, to go up steps it's kind of boring yeah so okay I, you know so to, so to get my heart rate up i started using the elliptical uh, okay really to get my heart rate up a little bit more okay uh, huh. just because it's, i think it's just easier for me to push within that spectrum it's like kind of sprinting you yeah know, i kind of got a background in that it's not just walking up steps oh so yeah i pushed myself my i was those my heart rate was a little bit more elevated so i started doing that because i was sitting subconscious about my weight not going down oh, <laughs> you right, know? right 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 <laughs> it's like whatever a little extra i can do so, uh, and then I did, I did bike or I, I'd walk for some reason when I walk, my glutes start to come in. Really? And I know, and I noticed subconsciously 
when I walk on the treadmill, but I, I just always like, I'm, I'm always like questioning it. Huh. So then I started to walk in the evening. Sometimes I'd rotate them. Yeah. And then, like I said, that week, you know, I noticed my, my glutes started coming better. Thinking, Interesting. Okay. <laughs> it's weird. I don't know why. But yeah. I wonder if it's just that bill would do that. Yeah, that's what I would think. Maybe it's just in how yeah. you step and, and how you utilize your legs and your glutes. That's it's maybe I, I may I know I know Ronnie used a treadmill a lot. You know, yeah. he had one in his room. So yeah, but I, I guess that's how I, when I, I set up. I don't know. Maybe that's how I use my hips mm. when I walk on it. But for some reason it, it brings them out. I don't know why. And it's almost like a recharge when I'm walking. Um, hmm. It's like it's like. I've heard it, you know, kind of like you recharging your system is so it's such a low intensity. Right, right. So it's like active recovery in a sense. I totally it kinda gets, yeah. It kind of gets my body like in this like cuz I'll, I'll get up trip when I have a pump. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. Thinking, I'm thinking, why do I have a pump? Yeah, everything feels good, man. I I right. like the treadmill. It's a good way to start the day for me, and right. it's just like I yeah. I, it's not like if I get on the stairs, man. I'm usually pretty pretty hit by the time I'm done with that. Right, right. So so at night when I'm trying to when I'm trying to go to I guess rest. Yeah, I don't want to be too high intensity at that point. So that's why I use the lower intensity in the evening. So okay. So you you did the two weeks uh, out in San Diego. You were home and everything. Then you came back out to Kuwait. Now, how long ago was that? How long have you been in Kuwait total now uh, for this stint? Oh, this stint, this stint, I say, without the two weeks previously, I came back like eight weeks out. Okay, okay. okay. So, because I had I had the size, I, I you know, I made sure I did the work outside of being here. Yeah. To where I didn't have to, you know, come here and just try to do everything. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's just more coming here and try to, try to get refined you know and, and get ready for the show and, and that's pretty much what's been happening uh we came out here and the and we went i guess coach wanted to go ronnie coleman style okay and, and we went the, you know the volume everything twice a week okay two 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 a days every day really really and and uh and i had to go to hungary to do to do a, an appearance probably like i think he, my coach asked me Okay, uh, is this enough? Uh, uh, are you you want to go back to lower volume? Yeah. And I said no, 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 I don't. I feel fine. I'm recovering fine. And then I, because I knew I had to leave and go to Hungary, like a whole another week later. Yeah. So I, it's like I can last another week, another full week, a week and a half, whatever it was. Okay. I can, I can, I, I'm, I know my body's capable of doing it. So that volume was high, it was really, really high. So when I left. Of course, I'm not able to train twice a day. I'm only going to train once a day. Okay. So the intensity drops. Mm. And then by the time I came back, they had pulled the intensity back anyway. Okay. Okay. So, you know, sometimes when you pull the intensity back, your body does some crazy things. Sure. You know, it's kind of like overreaching as well. So what, what were you so, seeing at that point? Well, it's like, it's like I guess with the more rest, uh, the, the clarity of the muscles coming, mm. coming, coming through a little bit more. The, uh, I, got I just noticed... I just noticed when I went to Hungary, I just got this denser, grainier look mm. out of nowhere. Yeah. Uh, just because it's, it's kind of like, you know, at that point I was eating a you know, decent amount of carbs too. Okay. So, uh, you know, everything was, was going in. And I think my body just was starting to rest more. So over that whole week, by the time I got to, to the end to doing some of the photo shoots, I, I was looking like, I look crazy looking, you know. I was looking crazier. Yeah. Just from I guess being in a rested environment, not just just get off the wheel a little bit, you know. Yeah. So I, I saw my body doing something crazy, and it was like, okay, this is just a different look. And we took some video that week when I got back, and um, I I don't really I hadn't really looked at myself from the back. Okay. And when the when we did the video, and my video guy hadn't really came, he would just start coming when I got back. And when I saw the video and I turned around, I was like, hold on. <laughs> I, I look I look different. Like, you yeah. know, I look different. Like, and like drastically, you know, from the front, you can, you know, you, you look at yourself from the front. You can kind of notice changes. But you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You see okay. it every day, can, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But when I turn around from the back and then I saw myself hit my abdominal thigh, I was like, man, that's, hmm. that's different. Hmm. I mean, that's different. Yeah. And so I know I'm coming to this show and I'm thinking, OK, the scale's not want to move much. I'm, I'm put, really trying to push the condition. I know I'm coming in better condition because my coach is a stickler for it. He's not going to let me. He's not going to let me not come in condition. Yeah. And I'm worried about it a lot. But, you know, I just I'm going to be bigger. Uh, some body parts have definitely improved. 
What what do you see improvements in personally? What are you noticing? Well, well I noticed I noticed I noticed the hamstrings seem a little denser. Mm, okay. From the from the back, as as well as as, as well as when it goes into the glutes, I, I just feel like I'm a, a heavier from the, at the bottom. Okay. In a sense, all the way around in general, even 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 the quads are, feel like I'm heavier there. Yeah. But at, but then I look I look through the the density of the shoulders and the arms, just. I inadvertently probably train arms more. Okay. Doing the doing the doing the, uh, the you know the double frequency we, you know Ronnie Coleman style. Yeah. We actually have, you know I probably I probably train arms more during that phase than I would normally want to. Mm, okay. And then and then and then also uh, you know the shoulders were getting hit quite a bit with all that. So I just noticed that that thickness as well through there. Okay. And kind of like a maturity as as well. And I. I I really chopped this up as a lot of maturity. Okay. Uh, as well, I think the timing. I think timing is everything. Yeah, yeah. And right now, it's like the season for me is like no matter what we 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 think we should do or think we should be going on, my body is like doing what it says it, it thinks is best right now. Nice. And it's not it's not like I'm disagreeing with what it wants to do. <laughs> right, right. But it, it's it's like man, this is like it's and that makes me that makes it crazy for me. Having such an opportunity, mm. um, and your and, and and everything kind of, and your body behaving like you it hasn't before in, in a good yeah. way. Yeah. You know, it makes it crazy. It's like it's like I'm going into this Olympia. We made these plans. You know, I, I want to be spoken of as a front runner. I, you know, I want to be a threat to the title. And you know, <laughs> my body's everything I see is is leading me on in that right direction. That's awesome, and you know, and that's a, that's a blessing to me. But it's like it's really cool for your mindset. You know? Oh yeah, really absolutely. cool for your mindset. It's like you got this piece about it, you know. Yeah, and, and I don't I don't stress a lot in the first place, but mm. it's like when everything you do, you feel okay. I'm catering to to what's about to happen. Yeah, what I want to happen, you know. So and that's it's just weird. It's a weird. It's a weird feeling, and it's like. You think to yourself, oh, man, how how long ago was I thinking about this maybe happening? Yeah. Like how early? How how long ago was that? You know, when when I saw Ronnie Ronnie lose his title in what oh six mm-hmm. at my very first Olympia visit, you know, that kind of turned it that turned it on for me. Yeah. Why 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 was I'm that? Thinking, why did you what, what turned what happened there that made you to realize that that this could be a reality one day? Because to me, it was impossible for, for Ronnie to be beat. Mm, okay. At the time, and I said that I thought the impossible just happened. Mm, okay. Yeah. And and for me, it, it was an epiphany in a sense that, you know, I know the room was loud, but I, everything in my mind was quiet. I'm looking at this like, wow, yeah, yeah. I'm here for this because I'm thinking, how, why am I here for this? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not really supposed to be. Yeah. I wasn't supposed to be at, at the show. I know I wasn't. I wasn't on the list to be there. I got, I got Lenny with some bottles. Okay. <laughs> that, that, that happened to, you know, we had the same manager. So I uh, wasn't supposed to be there. But I came in that right moment. Ronnie's routine. Yeah. And I was right there at that right moment. Okay. Interesting. And that, that turned it on for me as far as bodybuilding. But I think to myself, you know, was I, was I anticipating when the, winning the Olympia at that time? In my mind, in my young mind, hmm. I know it set me off. It gave me purpose. <laughs> yeah, but was I was I thinking about one day being Mr. Olympia at that time? Hmm. <laughs> That's it's, a lot, it's, man. It's a, yeah. it's, a, it's a lot to consider, a lot to think about. Yeah. It's I think a lot it, to think about. I, I, how do you deal with with all that? Because you know, you, you know, obviously, you know, I, I see you on social media, so you're you're there. You're you're seeing what's going on. Uh, I I know I can I can only relate on like just a minute level, man. You know, being a, a state level competitor and knowing that this guy from this gym is going to be at my show and knowing I have to go against him. Um, you know, you see the guys that you're going up against. How how do you mentally deal with your competition? The, the position in general humbles me, hmm. meaning that I know these guys. You know, yeah. I'm friends with a lot of these guys. They're great guys. They're great athletes. There's a lot that I can respect about them. Mm, yeah. 
you know, they they've done the work. Incredible, mm-hmm. you know. And these guys are, are guys that I admire, you know, and I've looked up to them once upon a time thinking, wow, you know, if I ever want to be able to battle with this guy, I have to improve in this way, that way, this way, mm. you know? Yeah. And it's, uh, it's, 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 it's crazy because I mean, I have, a, have a, I feel like I have a lot of, I have a love, a lot of love in the sport, you know? Yeah. From from uh, from my former competitors, man. I, cause I respect everybody, you know. Even even people that I know, for whatever reason, <laughs> don't want to see me be successful. Hmm. I still res- I still respect them. I mean, I still respect them, you know. Hmm. Um, and I respect what they've accomplished and what they've done. You know? Sure, sure. I, I can't help it. I can't help it because I, I, I know I know the work is put in. Yeah. So, but you know, it's. It's just a humbling experience in general. I can imagine. In my opinion. In my opinion, you know. I can imagine. So what do, what do you focus on then? Uh, how do you keep it from becoming a negative thing? Because it sounds like what you're doing is you're you're finding the gratitude to, 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 to be where you are right now. And I think that that's uh-huh. huge. Can you talk a little bit more about that? I just I just don't entertain the mm. negative. Okay. I don't I don't entertain it. I I I if anything, if it entertains me in any fashion, it entertains my sense of humor. Hmm. What do you mean? Meaning that even any any negative, you know, outbursts and and things that you see online or stuff like that, it comes across. Yeah. And I read, I think to myself, really, what it, what is that person going through to where they have to mm. blurt that negativity like? Yeah. You know, wh- wh- why? Why are they so tortured within themselves that it's like it's like they think they're they think they're coming off. I don't know how they think they're coming off, but it, it's, it's 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 almost laughable in a sense that yeah. you have to waste your time. So you have a good know? perspective, is what it sounds yeah. like. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's like it's like, and and then in a sense, that dynamic also creates balance. Hmm. What do you mean? Meaning that you can't. I don't want to hear everybody rooting me on. I don't want to hear that. Oh, I, I yeah. want to know that there's adversity. Yeah. I, I want to see that balance because that balance is also good for the people that come in there and are reading and are curious. Mm, yeah. You know. You know. It's also you know it's it's it, it's content in any fa- form or fashion any way you look at it sure <laughs> you know sure and it makes and it makes it interesting and people want to see how you respond sometimes I do respond yeah I've never seen you really lash out at anybody it seems like you no, keep I'm your not, cool pretty quick I'm not gonna lash out a lot of times I'll thank them yeah yeah for keeping things interesting <laughs> <laughs> right on right on <laughs> you know. I don't I don't know how they take that, but you know sometimes yeah. I think ah it's a little appreciated because I was getting numb reading you know all this until I got here and the whole mm. thing made my day made it interesting again know, huh a little more interesting again. <laughs> <laughs> you know I understand so so it's like I don't know man it's like I don't know if it's I don't take it either way it's, it's, it, whether it's good or bad I, I guess it doesn't it's not gonna it's not gonna rock my boat right on. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying this interview with Brandon Curry. I wanted to uh, stop and take just a quick, brief moment here to talk about this new contest that we're putting together. We're going to do this in conjunction with our sponsor, truenutrition.com. Of course, you can shop over there and use our code ADVICES to, uh, to let them know that you support our programming here. Plus, it'll get you a discount. Now, for this contest, what we've done is I've, I've gotten together a bunch of one pound bags of their flavored oatmeal blends and so we'll have several winners each winner will receive a one pound bag we've got a bunch of different flavors uh, oatmeal cookie mom's apple pie and some other stuff so uh so here's what i would like you to do we're going to do this uh this contest to promote think big bodybuilding media the new youtube page so i'd like you to in some way 
promote the YouTube page, whether it be take a screen cap of your favorite video or post a link up over at Facebook. You know, you could you could do this on any social media platform that you're using. And then just be sure to tag me over on Instagram. I'm at Scott McNally one. And of course, Scott McNally on Facebook. You can also uh, tag the Advices Radio Network. That would be great, too. So, guys, this would be uh, this would be really cool. And I'm uh, I'm looking forward to giving away a few bags of the oatmeal blends that they have over at True Nutrition. Several winners will be picked at random. If uh, if you want to try these oatmeal blends for yourself, then you can also get a hell of a discount. They give us a code, Advices Oats will, for now at least, get you 25% off. So this is a special deal that they're running right now. You can get 25% off of any other oatmeal blends. All right, guys, looking forward to seeing what you put together. And uh, let's get back to Brandon Curry. Back to the bodybuilding side of things, the actual, the, the sport of it. Um, mm-hmm. Can you tell us about where you're at weight-wise? What's going on on the scale in the morning? Well, when I woke up yesterday, I was like 255. Okay. Um, I say I gain anywhere from three or four pounds over the day. Okay, typically. that's it. That's it. Huh? Yeah. That's not much. That's it. Is it? I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that's mean. much, man. I know like VJ gains 10 pounds through the day and he weighs, uh, yeah. you know. And he and I are both like, you know, 60 pounds less than you. So, <laughs> okay. so I, I don't really, yeah, I don't, I also hear a lot of people like when they pull water, they lose a lot too. Mm, yeah. But I, but I don't, I, I don't, apparently I don't lose as much when I pull water. Okay. So it's, it's, it's interesting. So we know we'll be bigger, and, but that's not the goal. Okay. Uh, the goal is to just, is to be the, the, comp- the complete package. Mm, yeah. Make sure the conditioning is where it is. Like right now it's, 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 I'm in a frustrating state right now because I'm, I'm kind of flatten out easy mm, okay and, and and for me it's not it may not be flat for me for me flat is like okay i got blood here yeah and this area doesn't look like it has the life in it that it should okay. that's when i know i'm flat you know okay it, or or i'm like oh man if i was not if my i wouldn't look so soft here if i just had a little bit more carbs i know i wouldn't you know yeah and some and sometimes it's like that's what I'm getting to that state where I'm kind of like, ah, no, no. So my wife reminds me too. She's like, you look flat right there. I'm like, yeah. She says, I never. She says, I never seen you this flat before. Huh. But but then but then it's like, why can't I complain? Because if I'm this flat and I'm still bigger than I've ever been, uh, I, I don't think it's a complaint. Yeah. You know, it's not like I'm not eating carbs because I am. <laughs> what about, do you know about how many carbs you're getting a day? Uh, we we do about weight measurement. Okay. And I think I was at like 900. And that's just rice, 100 grams. That's rice and a potato meal, pretty much. Okay. Uh, two potato meals. So, and I think he just dropped me down to five. Mm, okay. 100 grams. But he said, you know, it's it's very temporary. Okay. He doesn't he doesn't like me to go flat. I just think, <laughs> I think the scale hasn't moved as much as. You know, we would expect, and he's just trying to see if it'll go anywhere else. Okay. So, do, so. Do you remember what you were weighing about uh, about two weeks out from the Arnold? <laughs> and the Arnold, I was, I was, I would just say I was like two forty two on stage. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, I, I was definitely probably under two fifty going into the to that show. Hmm. Okay. So not I'm not proud, too far proud. off, not too far right. off from where you're at now. Right. right. So what I've been really trying to figure out is what's different, you know, and, and it sounds like what you're telling me is it's just that things are clicking. You've been on a hell of a roll is what it comes down to. Yeah, man, it's, it's been good, man. It's been good. It's been unexpected. Uh, it's like I said, it's maturity. You know, I'm 30, well, I'm about 36 now, I think. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I just think I'm just, I'm just at that point, you know, it's timing. It's like, you know, you know how you know how it is in bodybuilding. It's it's it's, it's just sometimes you got those guys and they're, when they're on the road, they're on the road. You yeah, know? yeah. It doesn't last always, but you know yeah. when they're on that, they, they're on it, and it kind of feels like that for me. Yeah, it's like right now, it's like my time. I don't know, you know. It just happens to be, you know, a controversial event. You know, yeah. some people want to some people want to put an asterisk on it. Yeah, how do you feel about that? Because you know we were well, talking about that on the shows the other week, and. You know, because it's like it, Sean Broden's not going to be there. What? Tell me your thoughts. I say some people want to put an asterisk on the show. Yeah. 
And, and my immediate, my immediate, my my immediate reaction to that is, I got to change that. Mm. Okay. Like I got, I got, I got to make people question whether that's even necessary. Hmm. All right. Yeah. You know, that's that's what I think about. It's like because if I, you know, if I can shut that noise up, then I've accomplished something. Yeah. You know. So. You know, they could have said that. You know, we didn't have social media then. They could have said that when, when, uh, you know, Dorian left. Sure. <laughs> you know, yeah. we didn't have the media to really hear what everybody was opinion was about it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, they could have said that. You know, so it's, you know, and nobody would question after Dorian left whether it's an asterisk or not. I think at the end of the day, <laughs> my my thought is it's just it's disappointing that he's not going to be there. You know, last year, uh, being in the auditorium and, and seeing how things unfolded, you know, I, I remember looking up at the screen, looking back at the stage, just him and Phil standing there and then seeing the announcement and my jaw just dropped and just totally unbelievable. But then my next thought is, OK, now this sets us up. What's going to happen next year? And unfortunately, it, it took the air out of that for us. You know, that's the thing. It, that did, sucks. Take, it, did, it, it did take the air out. It did take the air out. It's a big impact. But I, I had I had I had confidence going against Sean Roden. Right on. Uh, I I really did have confidence. My my question was, man, I really wanted Phil Heath to come back. Yeah. Okay. I really did because I knew I knew what kind of motivation that that would provide mm. for me. Because you know I I admire him and you know in my head, that's what I was chasing. Okay. Yeah. Wow. You know. Wow. Yeah. In my head, you know, that's what I was chasing. So. You know, I, I try. You know, I was trying to get him to, at the Arnold to say he would want to do it. Yeah, but but you know, you know, he kind of beat around that bush, and he's not doing it apparently. So yeah, maybe I'll just have to wait. But <laughs> uh, you know, you know, that's that's you know that's that's probably the only thing I've you know kind of took it took it out of for me not knowing mm. kind of being on that limb. You know, I, when Sean's situation happened. You know, that was one thing. And it's like, I, I knew that didn't look good. All right. And I feel bad for him. I was like, man, this is crazy, man. Absolutely. <laughs> On so many this levels. Is, you know? yeah. I'm like, wow. Yeah. This is crazy. So, you know, and I feel bad. And, you know, he knows. He knows that, you know, I'm wishing the best for him in that situation. So, yeah. but, you know, at the end of the day, I'm like, man, well, People are gonna question that if I don't if I don't get a chance to beat Sean. Okay, people question that, but then it's like, well, Phil Heath may do it. That's good. Mm. Let's see if he's looking good. You know, I'm like he's looking pretty good right now. That's why. Let's see if he, let's see if he commits to it. You know, hopefully he surprises. But well, here's my here's my conclusion though. Asterisks or, or not, you know, the key is you you win it, you show him in dominating fashion, and then from there, you know, continue just being your best. I you know. That's you, you could have question the first time, okay? But then right. let's see what happens, you know, you know, after I mean, that. that 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 is exactly that is exactly what the motivation is, I think. I was talking to Batter about it last night, actually. Yeah. Yeah, we, we was uh we were eating at his restaurant last night and got to talking to him about that. He's you know, he's like <laughs> he's like you gotta be thinking about winning. Mm. <laughs> Yeah. I said, I said that's all I think about is winning. <laughs> that's all I think about. Yeah. What, you know? What's What's Bader like? I I haven't really heard too much from him. I, mean, I know he's obviously a huge supporter of bodybuilding. He's 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 a, he's a very very cool guy. He's he's uh, very level headed. You know, very very good businessman. Very ambitious. Yeah. Yeah, but people don't recognize how how intelligent he is either. You know? Okay. He's, he's, he, He's no, you know, people because people mistake him for being, uh, well, you know, they say he's always had money, but that's far from the truth. Really? Okay. <laughs> no, he's a businessman. He's, you know, he built he built this himself, hmm. you know, and he's done it in a, in a way to where it's you know his competition wanted to emulate him. Okay. Yeah. And, and you know, and, and they're not they're not really capable of doing it like he does because he. he He's like a poker player. He doesn't show his full hand. Mm, okay. You know. Yeah. When it comes to business, you know, when it comes to his his competitors, and he's always thinking ahead. Okay. Long term. Yeah. <laughs> Which a lot of, a lot of people don't do, but that's 
that's that's how he knows. That's where he feels, you know, uh, is safe, you know. So so people see what he see anything that he's done, and you know, some people think ah, but he, they think oh man, he, he's 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 you know he spends too much money, he's putting up too many gems, this and this and that. But it's like no 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 no. This 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 is a well <laughs> thought. Of this guy's he's three two steps ahead of you, <laughs> you know. Yeah, you know. So, so yeah, he's he's got an interesting story as well, you know. Yeah, yeah. I haven't heard story. much. Of- he says this. He says the story is much like uh, he started like the Fast and the Furious. Okay, you know, he got out of the military and uh, he used to he used to race street race cars here. Oh no, kidding! <laughs> no kidding! Wow. Yeah, and he opened the garage, you know. Huh. You know the service. Those, those that's was one of his first businesses. Okay. So you know, yeah, yeah. So you know, they used to bet money and stuff like that. It was, huh. was kind of like Fast and the Furious, you know. Wow. So that's where he kind of started, and then he took, he took, you know, that and flipped it into some. Uh, what we were thinking about is like coffee shops. Okay. They called him. They, I forget the name of the chain. You know, the business he had, but he, 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 he. Uh, you know, he take the idea of opening up a, a really, really nice place in an area that he maybe not provided that kind of that ah, service okay cool so it's kind of like he, he, he would uh just you know distract everybody from his competition by doing so hmm, okay really popular so you know he had some good business business strategies huh. and then he, of course he sold you know he, he could say, you know he sold that business or to some other you know he's he's very complex businessman you know very very respect but he loves bodybuilding he, he just loves bodybuilding he loves he loves being hands on. He loves picking all the equipment in his gym. Yeah, you know, and and like this gym we live next door to. He's expanding. Okay, it's one of it's. Uh, he's got like six gyms here, bro. It's no crazy. kidding. No kidding. Yeah, he's going to. He's just about to start one in Saudi Arabia. Okay. Wow. Uh, so he's getting out of Kuwait too, and, and uh, it's going to be crazy. It's going to be his biggest gym. But these gyms get bigger and bigger, crazier and crazier. They're nicer and nicer, you know? No kidding, He's got man. some hardcore branches and everything. So he, he does it all. But this gym next door, you know, it's, it's where he comes. It's like his little baby. His okay. office is here. He does his cardio here and stuff like that. It's not too far away from where he lives. Yeah. So, you know, he's taking – he wants to make the leg room bigger because he's built these other gyms and, you know, no they may have bigger leg rooms. Oh, no kidding. So, so but he's got a cross room. CrossFit room, oh really? Turf and the stuff like that up there. So he's taking that, he's putting it downstairs where the garage was in the gym. So they're building that out. Okay. To put the CrossFit area down there, huh. and he's going to expand the leg room. So he nice. needs more equipment that he wants to put in. To put nice. Because you know the gyms, you know we will go to a different gym sometime because we want to, we want to you know, maybe a different environment. But sometimes the gyms have just slightly different pieces sure you know some newer pieces pieces that we may not have so sure we'll come here and we'll, we'll go out over there and test some to change some workout things you know huh. to get a different experience yeah but i mean it's not to make that's not that you say that this gym here is not equipped enough oh i'm sure it's, it's, i can it's pretty, imagine it's pretty, much, it's pretty much we're just spoiled you know yeah it's like oh let's see what they got over here that we don't have yeah that's cool but man that doesn't, mean, that doesn't mean that we're not going to get it because if it's a good piece yeah it always ends it always ends up in this gym so what's uh what, what's tell me about one of your favorite machines that that they have at this gym next door to you ah man favorite machines man the, you know what batter does what's that he he removes the labels off the machines before he puts them on the gym floor really yeah why is that because he, he doesn't want imitation okay so he, he just he comes he buys it before it goes on the floor, it's stripped. So sometimes I know the name, I know the, the equipment by the way it's designed. Right, right. So I know, and I, maybe I've seen it before, but I, but typically they have a certain design, so you can kind of see what's going on. Yeah, right. Uh, but so when it comes to naming each machine, I may I may not identify actually appropriately, uh, depending on you know if I if I recognize how new it is or you know if i recognize the design or not right that's how complicated it can be no kidding wow yeah there's there's some uh there's some new that's a new plate gin i don't know if it's 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 some brand is gin something it's a plate loaded they do they do free weight loaded too because i've seen them in the magazine batter sometimes shows us things he's thinking about getting okay so you can see and he may ask your opinion and uh but they have a plate loaded it's like a steel stack of for, steel. 
Uh, for what? What kind of machine? What does it do? Well, it's 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 plates. It's a plate loader machine, but it's a steel a steel stack. Okay. And, okay. and this type, oh, yeah. And this 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 company, you know, you do a pack deck. You know, the pack deck is normally the stack is is here and everything comes down over you. Right. This right. company takes everything. He puts everything out under you. Really. So huh. it's open. Huh. And you're sitting on the the pulley system and everything. Okay. And, and it's like it's it's like the, a kind of freedom in that in that machine that allows a good stretch and that the range of motion is crazy. Huh. Some of the sometimes the cams on those machines are a little different, so the intensity phases are different. I tell people all the time when you train in a gym, you got to use you got to use the piece the way it caters to uh, how the how it targets the muscle. Most people say go through a full range of motion on every everything they can. Right. But some machines they have a a groove, yeah, to where you get maximal tension on the muscle. You know, I know what you and mean. Some of them transition from one groove to the next. So during the middle, it's like a it's like a low, and then at the top it comes a peak again. Yeah, yeah. So it's like it's like it's like a start intensity, and it's like a a give and a then a back. Yeah, like, you yeah. Know? So sometimes it's uh, like that. So it's it's each piece is a little different. So, I uh, man, it's. It's so much complexity that we use a lot of different pieces in the gym. But when you train on so many different pieces of equipment, yeah, you know, and, and, you, and you're really focusing on, on, on how it's hitting you, that that's what you, you learn to do. Yeah, like I'm, I'm I'm intuitive in that way, and my coach will look at me some days when he's just tired. He's like, he's like, well, what what's the next feel? What do you think? Because hmm. okay. he trains with us. Okay, and I'm like, well, we uh, right now the way that hit me, I need this right here right now. How many people do you guys so usually have? Typically, we'll have maybe like four people. But okay. since the gym is, is, is diverse, yeah, they may be training on a piece, and we may be training on a completely different piece, okay. and then we'll swap it out, you know? Yeah. You know, typically, you know, so I'm not, I'm only really ever training with one other person. Okay. Typically. Okay. We'll, so we'll go swap back and forth. So I train with, a, you know, some, some uh, Adohadia pro, pro here. I'm a, and uh, he's 212, so I train. And then I got a Fahad is a, is a pro here. Okay. He's from Saudi Arabia. He's 212. Uh, but my coach, you know, he trains with us too. And and it's like, he's very tenacious. Yeah. Like, he's very, he's a very, he's a, he's like, he's like a winner, you know? Hmm. And it's it, it's like, he he's really competitive. Okay. He, 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 yeah, he likes to, he likes to win. He's. He's fearless. He, he, you know, he, he likes a challenge. Hmm, okay. And uh, and and that's his personality. And he's also very very fast paced. Really. So he's he's going to, you know, he he, he attacks it, and he keeps the pace up in in, in in the session because, you know, he he's he's ready and he is capable of training at very very high volumes, which uh, uh, and you know and it's and it's interesting because you look at him you wouldn't think it's the case. But okay. he's, he's just tenacious. He's an ex judo guy, ex athlete, oh, you know, yeah. and stuff like that. So he's he's very he's you know he's very competitive in a way, and uh, that's what makes him like a good coach besides his eyes. Yeah, that's the attitude that he has. And you know, some people think it may be abrasive, but I embrace it because it's like it's, it's, you know this guy's tenacious. You know, that's cool. So uh, so yeah, you know he, he he likes my input. You know, he likes my feedback. He knows I can feel it. I can feel a machine. I asked him, he asked me, I asked, he's, before he says, he says, do this uh, right here. And I said, well, you wanted to hit me. Hmm. Right. And he was telling me, I, I wanted to hit you here. So, I, you know, I, I can I can make it hit me where I can adjust it or do what I, whatever I want. So he may say, what, what, what do you want to hit next? And I'm like, well, you know, I think this machine, this way, would be the best way to do it right now. You know, with the way that we just did, you know. Yeah. So it's a lot of times, you know, it's, it's an input, it's a feel, but we have so, so much to use. And my, my coach loves free weights, too. Okay. You know, sometimes I, I, I don't feel like going over there and picking up those dumbbells. <laughs> okay. You know? Yeah. And I'm yeah. like, and, 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 he's, and he's charged and he's ready to go pick up the dumbbells. Mm. You know, sometimes I, I don't feel like uh, bench pressing, you know, four or five exercises in. Right. But he's like, let's, let's, go, let's go do it. So it forces me to put it in the muscle. Sure. In a, in, a, in a special way at that point yeah. there's no ego lifting at that point mm, you, know yeah. what I mean? you know what i mean when you're using compound exercises within within the middle of you know working through machines and stuff like that you know if you always start with compounds you're confident in moving those poundages right and sometimes we do you know we, yeah. we, so most of the time we do okay but so then you... he throws another one in it in the mix yeah <laughs> 
like later on and you're like, whoa, I'm just, I'm smashed. Yeah. And you have to really focus on getting it, you know, getting that into that muscle and you're feeling that intensity of the actual exercises. What are, you know, without, without it being a punishing load in a sense. Yeah. So are you still doing two a days right now? No, no, no. We backed it off since I got back from, okay. uh, from my side tech trip, hungry. Okay. Budapest. So when I, by the time I got, I knew my trip, I was going to be uh, backing off to get a train as much because I had obligations. Yeah. So uh, then we come back and they had already backed it off to what we traditionally do, which okay. we work some body parts twice a week. Rotation. So we train every day but Friday. Okay. It's just one, one time a day typically because we'll combine body parts if we do more than one. Okay. <laughs> Instead of split them up. And so that brings us to Friday, the day we're recording this. You get the day off. What's what's your day like uh, on your day off hanging out over there in Kuwait? Well, I sleep a lot. Like, <laughs> I, I, will, I will catch up on a lot of sleep. And so I, typically I'll wake up, I'll eat, because that's what I do anyway. I wake up, I do cardio, and mm. I eat. And then I go to go back to sleep, even nice. on a regular day. Okay. But sometimes off days, he's like, don't do cardio, don't do anything. So I'll get up, I'll eat, and then I'll go back to sleep. <laughs> yeah. And I'll and I typically I'll sleep longer because I'm not having to train. Nice. And um, and in the evenings they do things in the evening. Let's say if coach wants to get me out, he'll come call me and pick me up in the evening. We'll go out to a restaurant. We'll eat. Nice. You know, if if, it, if it's a cheat day, even better. But, <laughs> you know, I saw you eating some burgers not, the other day. Yeah, 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 definitely. He, you know, he'll, he'll, he ain't afraid to, to do that yeah. because a lot of times it's a, it's, it's a way to get things really, really moving. And sure. Like you predicted, it, it took me down a stage. Mm, yeah. Down a stage after. I mean, I ate that, I ate all that food and I, I was still lighter. Oh, really? No kidding. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so he was like, Whoa, he's like, now I know you move. Now I know how fast you're moving. You know, something, <laughs> something I wanted to mention too, while I had you here that, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know if we really covered this in depth on the last episode that we, we talked, but, uh, you know, in, in the past I had heard people say, and we talked about this a little bit, that people were like, oh, well, Brandon has his family and he leaves them all behind to go over and train in Kuwait and he's, you know, not taking care of them. But, you know, talking to you more, you know, a, this is your living. I wanted to talk about this a little bit. The, a, this is your living. This is how you can support them. And, uh, and ideally, man, I mean, no matter where you're at, I mean, you're doing a great job. This is, this is going to be a way that you can take care of them for a really long time by being over here for eight weeks. And B, when we tried to schedule last time, you had to, I think we talked while you were like waiting to go pick up one of your kids or something. The difference is, is that, you know, I, and I want to tell you guys this at home, the difference is, is that Brandon will not do what he needs to do for bodybuilding because he's going to be taking care of his kids because you love your kids so much, you're going to put them first because that's what a dad does. And so this right, is your yeah. opportunity to have to separate yourself from that in order to be your best. It's something that I didn't quite understand until talking to you more. And it's something I wanted to make sure that the audience knew, too. Ah, uh, yeah, because, yeah, it's, it's intense, man. It's intense. You know, I like being a good dad. and My, my kids are, are really, really proud of me. And uh, they talk about, you know, they can't wait to see me, of course. But uh you know, I, I just I like seeing them do well, man. I can't yeah. wait to come back and see football season. I got three boys playing, and I can't wait to see. I haven't seen my daughter play uh, volleyball yet. She just picked up volleyball, and apparently she's killing it. Nice. They don't believe she's never played before. <laughs> so I, I, you know, I, I, I can't, I can't, I can't wait to see that stuff and get the personality. I'm on the phone a lot with them, so yeah, I, I see the personality changes. You know. Okay. And it's like, man, I can't wait to get back and just see, you know, take it all in, you know? Yeah. Because, you know, these guys are changing all the time. And it's uh, it's amazing the things that they picked up and learned. Yeah. And, 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 and you know, and you didn't think they got it at first, but they, you know, you're like, man, they got it. No kidding. And I, and I can challenge my sons. I can challenge my sons in my absence, you know, because they, they want to they want to make me proud. Okay. So I often I can often suggest you know you know different things of accomplishment like huh. when I left last time I su I suggested you know if if you really wanted to play football like your brother then yeah. you need to be able to throw that ball and every time a ball is thrown to you you gotta want you gotta want to catch it it's hmm. got it's gotta be yours to catch you know yeah so when I got when I got back apparently he had watched YouTube videos and he he had traded a, a toy at school for his friend's football ah okay and 
<laughs> and uh, he was working with the football a lot. And uh, he was, you know, getting his mom and people throw it to him. His mom could throw a football really well. No so kidding. Sister. Yes, they can both throw football. That's cool. And uh, so so he, uh, by the time I got back, he was throwing that spirals and he was, he was catching everything I was throwing at him. And wow. I'll like, be damned. I was like, okay. Okay. You know, and it's, it's the same thing with all of them. I try to find out where they're at yeah. in their head. Yeah. Because I know if anybody's going to be able to get in their head and and motivate them and get them to, you know, think out, outside of themselves or push themselves away, I know I can. So as a dad, you can challenge the kid's ego. Mm, okay. And Because and, I have, you know, you got to know your kid. Yeah. If your kid has an ego, ego, then you have to challenge his ego. That's how you can, you know, that's how mm. you, you can get him to be his best. Yeah, you know, if your kid doesn't have an ego, it's not it's not gonna work to challenge the ego. You're just gonna you're just gonna make them, you know, insecure. Right, right. But, you know, but I have, you know, I know I know my sons well, so you know, some of them I have to challenge. Some of them, my youngest, I have to. Hmm, he, he's more complex. Okay. In a sense, he's 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 more he's more. I think he's more different from me. Hmm. In a lot of ways, huh. but he, he has a side of me that I'm I'm not very aware of. Interesting. Meaning huh. Everybody else recognizes it. Okay. In him. Yeah. But I'm not aware of it because I, I don't connect with that side of me, I guess, as much as that's, I probably should. That's kind of deep right there. So that uh, is. Yes. But but seeing but seeing him. So I'm trying to I'm, I'm really, really as he, he's the youngest and he's the one I'm really trying to trying to trying to crack and figure out. Okay. Because he's he's uh very intelligent. He 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 picks up on things. He's 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 a little wise man in a sense. No kidding. And and and, 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 just, and but he's very silly, so it's com- it, it can be confusing. Huh. Yeah, he doesn't this take himself too seriously. Young. Yeah, it's it's confusing that in a sense that this kid you think you think about him and he's like he's so silly but he picks up things that this kid should not know. No kidding. Like he should not connect these dots. No kidding. Huh. At this age, you know? So I, I, I just watch him because I'm really, really trying to figure him out. Huh. Really trying to figure him out. And, and, and you know, he's always the one that wants to talk to me. Mm, yeah. You know? So it's like, so I think he's the one that's probably, probably going to listen to me the most okay. without much, much challenge. Okay. Without much challenge. I think he's the one that I'll be able to just sit out and just talk to anything about and he'll take he'll take everything i say as gold yeah and uh <laughs> well with some of the other ones yeah i have to maybe uh i mean like i said maybe challenge his, one of my sons my middle son i challenge his ego a little bit so I, he's, he's much you know i take it i take it they're all gonna join you out uh in vegas then for the show oh uh, yeah they're gonna be there my son's team is bummed that he's gonna miss the game i got one son playing that weekend oh man they play one of the hardest teams he's not gonna be there okay well hopefully they <laughs> the do the first time they beat him was last year uh hopefully they do well without him i uh i've got one more question for you and uh, actually one of our listeners asked it too we're on the live feed here uh are you gonna keep the beard for the show <laughs> no 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 i figured not uh i'm not gonna keep no 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 i i I I just do this because it's it's just easy, it's easy. I don't have to worry about. I don't I, you know I don't have to look good for anybody. Yeah, it's not like you see any women around here. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like you know it's like mm, it's just easy. Uh, you know I'll cut it I cut it when it's showtime. <laughs> yeah, fair enough, man. Well, I'm looking forward to it. We're uh, we're under two weeks now to the Olympia, I believe, and uh, you're going to be heading out in probably a, a, another week or so. And uh, we're we're getting down there to the wire, man. So I'm I'm really excited to see how this unfolds. And uh, regardless of the outcome, I'm excited to just see what you bring because I really do feel that you. I see the momentum. I see it in in the pictures that you've been posting, and I can I can hear it in your voice here. Um, and I think it's going to be, it could be possibly the best branding career that we've seen yet, which is, it's saying a lot, man. That's all, that's, that's, that's all I can hope for. Right on. Well, I appreciate your time very much. Uh, thank you. Enjoy your evening. And I'm glad I got to spend some time with you guys. <laughs> uh, me too, brother. For another episode of Advices Radio and for now, the, uh, the Think Big Bodybuilding Media Network. I'm Scott McNally with the one and only IFBB Pro, Brandon Curry. Thanks for watching, guys. We need to let them know who we are. Yeah?
And who the hell are we? We bring that broke pathetic, dope aesthetic Back to basics, smack to bass hits And have your favorite rappers Wrapped in plastic, stacked in basements Crack the A-list, tacky famous jack off Act like Larry David Married to the game, no fornication wow. I'm that complacent It started with a case of Marky Mark disease Then rap departed Now it's tax IDs and black eyed peas Let's act retarded Every track is harmless garbage All your plaques is tarnished I bring it back to carnage Mac 11 stashed in trap compartments Thank <laughs> you.